Hi, Matthew Holt at the Health 2.0 conference, and uh, thrilled to be talking to another of the winners, uh, the finalists and the winners in the uh, Robert Johnson funded opioid challenge. Uh, this is Tyler Burley. Burley? Burley, I haven't got the right title. Tyler, Tyler Burley from uh, Datacubed. And you guys have a product called Rescue, which actually came second in the Epic Challenge. So tell the people, what, is it, what does Rescue do? Uh, so Rescue uses gamified clinical instruments to identify when individuals are at risk of relapse or reuse. Um, and it uses the data collected from these instruments to mobilize their support network. So their friends, their family, their clinicians, their mentors. Um, and at the same time, it uses, um, uh, we've drawn from the literature on therapy and behavior change to coach individuals in these supporting roles on how to be good supporters, how to approach situations where individuals are at risk for, for various factors like loneliness or stress or cravings, things like that. So uh, if I was uh, using Rescue, it's uh, an app on my phone, how, how, do, how do I actually work and what's my experience going to be? Well, it'll, it depends on whether you're an individual with opioid use disorder, in which case you'll install the smartphone app, um, you'll be introduced to this um, regimen of clinical instruments over a period of time, you'll enroll support users who you want to be there to, to keep track of you, to keep you on track, um, and then as a support user, what you'll see, um, you'll gain access to a dashboard where you can um, check in on whoever you're trying to support, where you can gain access to resources to become a better supporter, um, and see insights into the individual's condition and, and when to intervene. And if I'm a supporter, someone of the caregiver support, mentor, friend, network, uh, what kinds of things can I do to help somebody who's going through struggles with either with, you know, addiction or, or withdrawal or whatever it happens to be? Uh, so one of the things you can do is, is try to understand what their triggers might be. So you can see um, on their timeline of data the, the times when they um, have relapsed or reused opioids. And, and would they have put that information themselves or are you catching that from us? They will. They, um, uh, every time they log into the app, they're going to be asked if they've remained abstinent for that day. Um, individuals are actually very honest about whether they've reused, as right. we've found in clinical research. Um, so as a supporter, you can see when they have reused, when they have relapsed, and then you can see, you can backtrack through time and see what their triggers might be, what the context around that reuse was. So next time you can jump in and intervene when they're reaching that point again next time. Because reuse and relapse is actually pretty common during recovery. Um, and that's one of the things we do is we try to normalize um, the entire process of recovery. A lot of people think, a lot of people have really toxic ideas about what it means to be a supporter, um, whether that is to, you know, threaten to cut off all ties or shame them. Those things don't work. And so what we try to do is um, give them approaches that are actually more efficacious um, as supporters. So tell me a bit about your background. You're a research scientist uh, on, on this product and, and, and DataQ. Tell me what, what that means and what kind of work you're specifically doing. Uh, so my background is in uh, cognitive and social psychology. Um, so I've studied things like behavior change, um, cognitive games to measure, things like memory and um, emotional um, states. Uh, so my role at Datacube is to validate all the clinical instruments that we're using um, and find different innovative ways of using our platform, like building Rescue as a consumer-facing product. And tell me a bit more about Datacube beyond Rescue. What other things are you working on? So Datacube, Rescue is a spin-off of our, our main product, which is a, a product for running clinical trials. Um, so right now we're working with a, a couple of CROs um, where um, we're trying to use gamification to improve compliance and retention, um, ensure that these clinical trials are more successful. Um, and right now we're trying to get into more consumer-facing products like Rescue, um, where the, there's more of a, an interventional or behavior change role. Great. So we had a pretty good signal from the uh, from the judging here that yeah, I think I think there were over 100 entries in this uh, competition. You came you came in second. It's a pretty good signal. It's a pretty good product. Uh, where, where are you going to take it from here? Uh, right now, we're trying to get this product in the hands of people who need it, um, individuals with opioid use disorder. So um, right now, we're we're building an Android and iOS version that we're going to release into the App Store. Um, we're going to get a lot more feedback from individuals who have this condition who are using it. Um, iterate, build our our are designed to be more efficacious, um, to be more user friendly, um, and we'll go from there. And then uh, thinking about both what the, the, the app you built, the company you're working in, and your professional background, what do you think, uh, what else can we do to help the opioid crisis overall? Well, I think one of the things I've learned from um, you know, the top three entries here uh, is that social determinants are really important to uh, various conditions, addiction in particular. You know, one of the reasons that individuals 
uh, are vulnerable to opioid addiction is because they've become disconnected from society, they've been, become disconnected from things that they find meaningful in life, and they're seeking an outlet through opioids which give them pleasure, give them a sense of um, uh, connection. And so I think one of the lessons coming out of rescue, coming out of even Sobergate as well, is we need this, we need these products here to support people, to get them connected back to society, their friends, their loved ones, and the things that they find meaningful in life. Yeah, I mean, that's a great sign. We've had a lot about addiction research over the years, about how you've got to, you know, get somebody a job, get them some help, get them some support, and obviously what you're doing with Rescue is, is right in line. Fantastic. I've been talking with Tyler Burley. He is a research scientist at Data Cube, the makers of Rescue. Rescue came second in the Robert Johnson Foundation's Opioid Challenge, run by Catalyst to Health 2.0, um, just yesterday at the Health 2.0 conference. Tyler, thanks for your time. Thanks a lot. Pleasure.